Do I want to use the Linux desktop environment GNOME or KDE Plasma? This is a question that I've been asking myself for quite a long time now. And trust me, the releases of GNOME 46 and KDE Plasma 6 made it a much harder choice than I initially thought and my decision might surprise you. Before I took a good look at both desktop environments, I patiently waited a few weeks so that they can iron out some discovered bugs. Now with the release of the Fedora 40 beta, I think it's safe to say that most problems that were discovered at launch have mostly been resolved now. Alright, so let's first take a look at GNOME 46. And even though it seems like a more minor release, there are some really cool features packed inside of it. Let's start off with the settings. The navigation bar now features a couple new icons and some menus shifted their place. The remote desktop settings move to a new category called systems for example. But this is mostly due because it now supports a so-called headless login. Previously on GNOME you could only use the remote desktop protocol to connect to a machine with an already logged in user session. Now with GNOME 46, like on Windows, you can also RDP to the login manager, even when no user is connected. Even though I rarely use RDP on Linux, I find it awesome that GNOME has an inbuilt way to connect to your desktop, since on other desktop environments you typically have to install an additional program and not everything is Wayland compatible yet. And yeah, Wayland has improved a lot in the past two years and if you run multiple monitors, then you do want to use it. Let's move on to the new Microsoft Online Accounts functionality. We can now finally log in with both a business or personal account and can even access OneDrive via the GNOME File Manager. For businesses or universities that pay for a Microsoft Office subscription, this is a really cool nice to have, since more and more people get used to have cloud access in their file managers. In my opinion, GNOME is much more powerful than Windows, since everything integrates seemingly. Calendars, files, contacts, shared printers, whatever you want. But the single greatest feature for me personally that finally made it into GNOME 46 is variable refresh rate support. Even though it's just an experimental feature that needs to be manually activated, it works surprisingly well in games. But it's not perfect yet. Since GNOME uses VRR not only for full screen applications, but also on the desktop as well, there are some things that are not working as intended. For example, I seem to have issues with full screen windows on displays that are not marked as the primary one. If no overlay or moving scene like a video is playing, full screen windows drop the cursor frame rate and it becomes a bit stuttery. And I'm not alone with this, since others also seem to discover the same. Luckily, this is not a huge issue, since you can enable VRR on a per display basis. And I also opened an issue for this. As an experimental feature, it's probably not a high priority though. Oh, and fractional scaling has also gotten better, but it's still not enabled by default and the login manager has changed a bit. And somehow I kind of like the new design. Like compared to the old one, not every login screen I know. And the notification area has been improved, whereas you can now expand notifications which feature more text and you can now also better identify which application sent it. Oh, and I almost forgot, Nautilus, the file manager, also received some love, whereas the positioning of file copy actions was adjusted and you can now finally, finally click into the top bar to edit your file path. And this was way overdue, since yes, you could access it with Ctrl L before, but seemingly no one used to know that. Alright, those were the main things that changed and overall, while GNOME 46 didn't change all that much in its usability experience, it is now smoother than ever, even without VRR, supports better direct scan out for less latency, even more usability adjustments and headless remote desktop support. But there were some things that I discovered that weren't so nice. First, it crashed twice already. Both times I was editing a video in DaVinci Resolve and it crashed, like hard. Even the terminal wasn't accessible anymore and I had to force reset my PC. This is not something new. Some older version of GNOME, maybe 42, also had this issue and it usually happens when a lot of applications are open. Like a lot related to video and audio and it somehow overwhelms my Wayland session. This issue was definitely gone with GNOME 44 and 45, but it seems to have returned. Maybe it's also related to VRR, I don't know yet. 
What's a way bigger deal for me personally is that they somehow broke some workspace functionality and I cannot drag and drop files between desktops anymore. That is a very specific feature that I didn't even realize I used until it didn't work anymore. Alright, let's move on to KDE Plasma. In my last video on why I'm still using GNOME, I had high expectations for Plasma 6. And boy, did they deliver. As a GNOME user who really likes using workspaces, virtual desktops and generally just seeing all your applications if you want to, the new Plasma 6 overview is huge. Not only does it behave similarly to GNOME, you can now also properly launch applications with it. Previously that sometimes led to complications, since when I wanted to launch a new instance of a browser for example, it automatically selected the open window instead. Now you can deactivate this functionality and launch as many instances as you want. I really like having just one key on my keyboard, whereas I can access my virtual desktops, but also my applications. And while GNOME does this a bit better with a dock and application menu, KDE Plasma has a much more powerful approach to window management. The grid view is in my opinion even better for dragging windows to a different screen than it is with GNOME's little window approach. I only wish that it was possible to launch applications from the grid view as well, or at least trigger the search bar and automatically return to the regular overview mode. What I also really like about Plasma 6 is that they changed the default thumbnail switcher to a grid one. This is a pure personal preference, but I always found the old vertical one too big for me. For gaming with the kernel 6.8 and upwards, KDE Plasma should now also support tearing in video games without setting a certain parameter. Or at least it should have been, but there is still one merge request missing and it hopefully makes it to Plasma in 6.1. But there is still something more interesting that I found. You can actually control your monitor from the quick settings. For example, like change its brightness. And this kind of amazed me, since you usually need a very specialized proprietary application for that. I really like that Plasma exposes these features out of the box. But now, onto the bad stuff. The new overview is really cool and all that, but I wish that I could use my scroll wheel to switch between desktops. And yes, not just on the desktop wallpaper. As a video editor, someone who makes thumbnails and also games from time to time, I basically always have one hand on my mouse. And GNOME handles this much better than Plasma, as I can simply press the Windows key and scroll, no matter in which application I currently am. This works especially well with virtual machines. There is also the thing with no panel in the overview. Like okay, the new option for deactivating the filtering of windows is sufficient enough, but having access to the panel would still be an advantage. I think I recall that this was a technical issue, whereas they would need to rewrite the whole overview and how the panel behaves or something. Then there is also the online accounts integration, which is there, but not as advanced as GNOME's, and KDE Plasma still doesn't come with KIO views by default, that mounts file shares with an actual browsable path which some applications need. Okay, that sounded a bit negative in the end, but most of these issues can be worked around. The thing is, both GNOME 46 and KDE Plasma 6 have reached a level whereas I am comfortable using both. Yeah, yeah, GNOME has the account integrations, the better overview and the more stricter design philosophy, but lacks some adjustments. VRR, for example, is finally here, but still has some bugs, and there isn't an easy way to only enable it for full screen applications like KDE Plasma can. On the other hand, it has a lot of applications and tools that feel better out of the box, but you can actually somehow replicate this in KDE Plasma as well. So, which one suits me better now? Honestly speaking, GNOME just nailed the experience for me personally. I never thought I liked using workspaces so much. And for me, it's also kind of fun to use. But the new KD Plasma overview actually managed to surpass it. The grid view and the current way how you can access it, even without scrolling, just blew me away. I bound the overview cycle to my meta key, so a double press gives me access to all my open windows and I can quickly drag them to the desktop I want. It's insane how well it works and it's the feature that kind of tips me into the direction of KDE Plasma. With some additional KWIN scripts, you could also even further customize the experience. And while sure, not every integration works as well out of the box as it does on GNOME, you can always manage to get something similar. 
I still think that GNOME is the best Wayland desktop environment for beginners, because it offers a lot of stuff out of the box that users might need. KDE Plasma is much more modular, which is its greatest strength, but also its greatest weakness. But you can shape it into the thing you want, now better than ever. And it's a desktop environment that I will continue my Linux journey on. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and definitely make sure that you also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any more videos like this. I would also like to hear about your opinions on this matter, so definitely make sure to also leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.